This AI automation is the best way to emulate anybody's viral content strategy. And all we have to do is fill out a form. So big picture, what is this automation doing? Well, it's letting us analyze any video from any content creator on Instagram or TikTok via the new Gemini Analyze video module that just came out last week, and then break down what it is they're doing in their videos. The hooks, the content, the editing, the pacing, what they're doing with text, everything that's important for you to be able to recreate it in your own style. Then once we get all that data, we're uploading it to our database of choice. I am giving you the option of both Google Sheets and Airtable. I'm partial to Airtable, but you have both options with this template. So this is what the data looks like inside of Airtable. And like I said, we have all that analysis I talked about, the concept, the hooks, the hook formula, structuring, all that. And the nice thing about Airtable is we get these pretty interfaces, right? So I'm able to just scroll down here, click on the video I want to analyze, and I can see all that in a nice visual format. But none of that analysis really matters if we can't figure out a way to give you practical steps to recreate those types of videos with your own niche content. And that's exactly what you see here with the recreation framework, where we go into like the universal elements that apply to any sort of video you do in this particular style. We talk about the customizable elements, like what can you specifically replace? And then we go even into potential variations of that same style of video. So all in all, you're just getting a ton of data at your fingertips so you can recreate viral videos of your favorite creators, but with your own content. So that's what we're doing here, right? We're scraping TikTok, we're scraping Instagram, we're getting the most recent viral videos of your favorite creators, doing some really deep analysis with the new Google Gemini module inside of N8N, and then we're bringing that analysis to you in Google Sheets and Airtable so you can actually take the analysis and do something practical with it. And all in all, I think this is a really cool automation because honestly, I really wanted to try out the new Gemini uh, video module. It allows us to really streamline this process instead of trying to do like weird workarounds where we download it to Google Drive and then like try to do all this hacky BS that just takes way too long and looks super ugly. But secondly, I think it really is useful to be able to do some deep dives of like how certain videos do go viral and like why they do it because there is formulas to it, right? Like what's the hook? Like what are they doing in terms of the audio, the visual, the actual content? And we get all that here. It's really, really detailed. And so that's what's happening big picture. What we're going to do next in this video is we're going to go down module by module. I'm going to show you how it all works under the hood. We're going to go and look at Appify and all that stuff. So you can kind of see what you can edit and what you can tweak. So you can really make this your own. And as always, you can get this template and more guides from my school. And there's a link to that down below. All right. So first things first, our form submission. Now let's take a look at this. Now, why did I do form submission? Because really it's just super easy. We could have tied this into something like Lovable too, if we wanted to right? have a real user interface, but I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So we're just asking a couple questions off the bat. And the first one is, hey, what platform are we doing, right? We have a different scraper for Instagram and another one for TikTok. So that's why we have this option here, right? And you have the option of Instagram or TikTok. YouTube is another one we could be doing that will probably be an addendum to this template. Um, but I wanted to stick with the short form stuff first. And because like some of the analysis for long form is obviously going to be a little bit different than short form. Next over here, we have their username. And so this is where you're just going to put the expl explicit username of that creator. And oftentimes it will differ from TikTok and Instagram. So make sure you're just doing the right one and we don't need any sort of at sign. And then last two are the number of videos you want to analyze can really be any number. Just understand the more videos that you have, the longer it's going to take. Each video to analyze, I would say, takes about 20 to 30 seconds for the short form stuff. For, so if like a two minute video is going to take you 20 seconds, basically. Think 10 seconds a minute is roughly what I noticed. And then lastly is the days since the video was posted, and that's in the number of days. So you want in the last seven days. So this is taking the top five videos of the last week. Easy. And then from there, we go into the switch module. So this is just deciding, hey, are we going through the TikTok or Instagram route? I'm going to show you the TikTok route in this video. It's virtually the same for Instagram. Same sort of scraping deal, same sort of mapping. It's just the actual values for the mapping is different. OK, so let's dive into the scraping portion now. So here we are at the TikTok scraping, and our scraper of choice is Appify. Now, this is the one we're using, the TikTok scraper by Clockworks. And if you've never used Appify before, it's a marketplace for web scrapers. So think TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all that stuff. There's scrapers for it. And you can find it on Appify. And as a quick aside, I've done other videos on Appify. So go ahead and check those out. Um, but I'll talk about the pricing real quick right now up front. With Appify, there's a free version. And you get $5 just off the bat every month. Every single time you run the scraper, it costs a certain amount of money. For these scrapers, you're looking at like half a cent or less per video. So just keep that in the back of your mind. 
if you end up going to the paid version like I have here, it's going to cost you $39 a month. So it's either free or $39 a month and like $120. Consider the $39 a month a credit. So if I use this and I spend $5 on this scraper, that $5 is pulled from that $39 bucket, right? I'm not paying $39 on top of five. So that's how it works. Now, what this scraper does is, is it actually gives us a ton of information. And there's ways for you to kind of like tweak this, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But the long and short of it is, is we connect to Appify using the API. We then send this JSON body. And this is where we are mapping the data from that form submission. So you'll see here we mapped the number of days since the video was posted. We're mapping the actual profile, right? That's why we need the username. And then the amount of results we want, right? And you see that reflected here on the right with the actual map values. So that's what we're pushing to Appify to get our data back. And over here on the right is all the data that we get. And I know I kind of obscure this a little bit, but all you need to know is this is a ton of data, right? That is a ton of data we're playing with, and that's just for five videos. So what, what data do we care about, and what can we get rid of, and what can we add, right? Because I'm going to give you this right here, but I also want to show you how you can edit this. And as always, make this your own and customize it. And the way you're going to do that is by coming inside here to the TikTok scraper. Again, there'll be a link to this in the school. And it's literally you just playing around with it. So right here, you'll see it as JSON, and you'll see it as manual. JSON, this is going to look very familiar to this because guess what? I just copy and pasted this to this. Now we can change this. And how do I change this? Well, I go to manual and you see all these different options here, right? Video URLs, search, right? So videos from specific profiles, what we've been playing around with. And you can see these settings in here that I was using, right? Chase AI, latest seven days. But you see there's other options I didn't play with, right? Like you could scrape videos that only have a certain amount of likes, right? or exclude pin post, or you could actually download the videos themselves, right? Which is what we do. You can include thumbnails, slideshow images, right? So there's a ton of different settings, but as you change these settings, right? Like let's say I did 100 hearts here. If I then go into JSON, you can now see here where it says most digs, that changed to 100. That wasn't there before. So I suggest you go in here to manual, you play with these settings when you decide you want to customize it. You then go to the top right where it says save and start. It's actually going to scrape the data for you. And then you can go into runs. And this is where you're going to see the data that you scraped, right? So the flow is come in here, change the settings, run the scraper, go to runs, take a look at the output. And if you like the outputs you're giving, go back to input, go to JSON, copy all this paste it into here, and then map accordingly. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Just understand inside of Appify, it kind of becomes your little playground where you can play with the knobs, see what the results are, and then once you're satisfied, plug it back into here. Now, for most people, I think this will be enough, right? This is just downloading the videos based on the amount of results we put in and how recent we want it, right? So seven days, five videos, this creator. Understand you could also do multiple creators, but it could be kind of confusing because we're also running the Instagram one in parallel. Truthfully, I think it's simpler if you just keep it to one creator at a time because you can always just run it again with another creator. So all is that to say, this is how you do it. And this is all the data we're getting. Um, again, if you're confused, it's like, hey, how do I set up Appify API stuff? I'll link right here to the Appify video where I go through APIs. Just go through that process. It's not too difficult. So we get all that data. In this case, we asked for five videos, so we have five items. Now we're going to pass it into Gemini. And this is from one of the most recent N8N updates. So if you haven't updated N8N in the last week or so, you're not even going to see this option. But you just need to go over here, search for Gemini, go to Google Gemini, and you'll see that now there is a Analyze Video option. I think I'm obscuring it. But yeah, Analyze Video right here. So that's what we have here. And I'm using my free Gemini API key. If you want to know how to connect Gemini, just click here. And then I want you to copy paste this. Just be like, hey, Google Gemini Palm API, how do I connect into ChatGPT? I'm not going to go through it here in this video, just for the sake of time. So, But that's how you connect it. It's not too difficult. If you've done Google credentials before, it's actually fairly easy. And like I said, you can actually do it for free. So here's our Gemini API key. Analyze, we're going to do analyze video, right? You have a few different options. Model, we're just using 2.5 flash, which is pretty quick. And we want a fast one because, again, it already takes enough time as is to go through these videos. 
And then we have our text input and the text input for all intents and purposes, is like a system prompt. And so let's take a look at what we're telling it to do. So we break it up into really four parts, right? This analysis. And again, this is where you want to customize it. So the first thing is the core concept and hook analysis. And this is where we're asking, hey, what's this a video about? What's the niche and who's it for? Right? Pretty basic stuff. Next, we have the hook breakdown. And now if you're anyone who does any sort of content, you understand the importance of the hook, right? That first three seconds, you could argue it's even quicker where you got to grab the user's attention right away and like hold on to them. Well, how was this guy doing that? And it's extremely important to get very specific. So like we break into visual audio and actual psychological triggers. Like why would someone stay? So what's on screen? What are the first sounds? What are the first words? And why should anyone, what's like, what's going on in their mind, right? Is it social proof? Is it pattern interrupt, curiosity gap? Lots of ways to kind of like, you know, quote unquote, trick someone to watch your video. And what is this creator doing? That's what we look for. And then lastly, we go into the hook formula, right? So like, if this is what they did, what's the formula to recreate it, right? Because you don't want to recreate the same exact video. You're going to have your own niche, the own thing you're talking about. How do you do that, but using their template? Well, here we go. So that's one core concept and hook analysis. After that, we go into the content structure. So just kind of like more big picture, like what are the arcs of this video, right? How does it open? What sort of act two? What is the climax and payoff? And also what's the call to action, right? What are they actually telling the users to do? Number three, production and editing analysis. So here I just keep it to visual style. Like what are they doing with colors, text, that sort of thing? Um, I will say at one point I had this way more detailed and I cut back on it significantly. I included like what equipment are they using? What kind of software are they using to actually edit it and when do a whole post-production thing for the sake of not having like an entire thousand page document coming out at the end of this, I kind of cut down there. But if that's something you're interested in, like, Hey, how are they actually editing this? No, like really, what are the steps for them to edit this video and the way they do it? You could totally put that here. Then we have recreation and adaptation. So like, hey, the adaptation framework that I showed earlier, like, all right, what are like the universal elements of this video that work for any niche, right? And then of those things, what can I tweak? And then what are some variations of this format, right? How can I kind of put my own spin on it? So that's what helps. And then it goes into instructions, just like concise, but specific templates, formulas, blah, 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 blah. Again, this is where you make your money in terms of customizing this for your particular fit. So. What do we get in response? We well, get all this on the right, right? Quite a bit of data. And the issue that you'll notice here is all this data is just in one giant block, right? One giant block of text. Now, usually what we would do if this was inside of like an AI agent type deal, we would have like an output parser, right? So we could in this step say, hey, this is the JSON format I want you to output this in. We don't have that inside of the analyze video, which is why we then have this, the basic LLM chain, with a structured output parser. So we're just trying to take this giant block of text and break it up into in individual items. So then we can take those individual items and go to something like Google Sheets, right? And then say, hey, core concept, map it here, hook analysis here, hook formula here, et cetera, et cetera, right? And the only way to do that is to break it up into pieces. And so we break it up into pieces using this. So coming into here, what are we doing? The prompt is just that giant block of text. We require a specific output format so we can use the output parser. The system message is pretty basic, right? We're just saying, hey, we are going to break you up via the parser. Take a look at the output parser attached to you and divvy it up according to that schema. So let's take a look at the output parser, right? Structured output parser. We're doing it generate from a JSON example. So this is the example we're giving us. And like I said, this is a lot. I'll kind of zoom in here so it's even easier to see, right? So core concept, that's an item. Target audience, hook analysis, right? Hook analysis itself is like four separate items, right? We're getting really detailed for how this is being broken up. So it's easier for us to, you know, place it into Airtable or place it into Google Sheets and have it be easy to read at the end. So this is kind of the work we have to do on the front end for that. Also down here, we have the auto fix format. So basically what that is, is if we run this on the first try and it doesn't really give us the JSON we want, it's going to try again. And when you do that, it adds a little model down here. So we have OpenAI connected both to the LLM chain and the structured output parser, but this tends to give you a better or more consistent output. One thing I will tell you though, is when you use this, sometimes it will work, right? It's going to run it a few times. It might fail once and it'll work and it'll push out, you know, five items in the output you want. 
like we see here on the right. You know, you see all this broken up exactly what we asked for. This may still show failed. It's kind of just a visual bug. Like, like it failed, but then it retried it and it worked, but it's still going to show it failed. So don't get too scared if you see that. It's totally okay. But what we want at the end is this, what we see here on the right. And I'll move my thing. Whoops. And I'll move my thing over here. So yeah, you see how it's all broken up into these individual items that we will then place into our Google Sheet or Airtable. And that's what's happening in the next step. Okay, so now we just do the database update. And like I said, I'm so nice. I gave you two different options, right? We have Google Sheets and we have Airtable. I will have the templates for both inside the school. So go ahead and check those out. So you can just kind of plug and play. Well, let's kind of go into each of them real quick. Um, pretty basic stuff though, right? Connected to your, your particular document and your particular sheet. If you use the template that I provide in the school, you're gonna have to update that. And then, like I said before, we're just taking all these items and we're placing them into the appropriate like column, right? And some of them have multiple items. And that's what you see here, right? So it is kind of a pain in the butt to do it first. Well, at least for me, it was. You kind of just get a copy and paste it. But it gives us a pretty good um, product at the end of the day. Um, one thing of note, you'll see here for the thumbnail, you kind of have this image thing going on. And you have something a little bit different for Airtable itself. That's just so the actual thumbnail um, can be seen inside of our little databases, right? Same thing over here. Oh, there we go. Who's that guy? All right. <laughs> so that's what's happening here. And same thing on the Airtable side, right? Boom, 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 boom. You shouldn't need it. Well, if you do end up customizing this a lot, understand you'll, you will need to come here and just make sure everything is mapped appropriately to the correct thing. And so once you run it, what do you get? You get this. So we'll just go through it real quick on Airtable. We have our video URL here. So if I click on this, it'll actually take me to the video. You have the creator, you have the thumbnail. So essentially the cover page or the cover um, picture. Number of likes, number of views, core concepts, hook analysis, hook formula, content structure, editing, and then recreation framework. Sweet. And same thing over here is happening on the Google Sheets. And again, I think the, the big thing here is this recreation framework and also the hook formula and the hook analysis. Like between the hook stuff and the recreation framework, that really is gonna be the meat and potatoes of like, okay, what's driving the views here? What's driving the value? And where can I recreate it myself? So that's really where I would dig in deep. All right, so there you have it, guys. That's the viral video analyzer for TikTok and Instagram. Um, I think it's actually a pretty useful tool, and I think it'll be even more useful when we go ahead and add YouTube to this later, right? We sort of that long form video analysis. But in the meantime, I think this is really powerful for what it does and can really help you with your content game if you're kind of struggling with like, how do I recreate what these other people in my niche are doing really, really well, right? Big things are the hooks, big things are the general pacing, and just kind of like how they structure their video. And this analysis covers all that. So. Good luck with this. Check out the school as always for the templates and I'll see you guys around.